So this is my studio. Hi. Uh, I'm going to show you today just one of the processes. So it will be a one of the finishing layers, maybe not finishing, but uh, last layers uh, on the pans. So it's a transparent layer. In most cases today it will be Tamenuri, uh, but also some other ideas. And uh, I will go through probably boring for a lot of your process of putting on those layers. Of course I first have to filter the Urushi. Today I'm using uh, Kijiro clear Urushi and I will be using two brushes not Japanese ones because I'm not skilled enough to use them for the final layer. And first I of course will filter the Urushi. Uh, filtering Urushi is especially very important part when uh, sorry, when using it for final layers for cover layers or for last layer in a sequence because most layers uh, are uh, sequenced. So you have several base layers, several middle layers and then several, several top layers and the most important one and the most difficult to and the most uh, the one that should be most even is of course the top layer of the sequence. Uh, filtering Urushi, filtering Urushi is a special paper used. It's produced in Japan and I did not find any uh, substitute for it uh, from Europe or in any Western uh, country. And this Japanese paper is quite cheap and it goes a long way because you need just a little piece, sometimes more, depending on how much Urushi and what kind of Urushi you are filtering. So I buy the Japanese one. Okay, I tried using some other filters but they do not work. The Urushi is too viscose, too sticky and it, it's very difficult to use any other filter for it. Okay, not too train anything stupid like taking those pieces of paper in my mouth to, to filter it. I will use the rest of the Rushi in the filter paper uh, to clean the brush. My brushes are kept in oil. So it's an olive oil usually, or some other cooking oil. And you have to get rid of this oil before you start using uh, the brushes for anything. Because otherwise the oil will get mixed with the Urushi oil and it will change its behavior completely. So first of all you have to clean the brush and you just mix some Urushi in and pry it out with the spatula. Then add some more Urushi. Um, you mix it with this oil which was left on the bristles. And once again you yeah. take it out. Back to this one moment. Depends. I'm going to work today on is some kind of a midori tamenuri or. Well, I don't know how, how should I call it because it's quite complicated. I, don't, I sometimes don't understand why one color is called Midori Tamenuri and 
another one which is very, very similar, similar is called Aotaminuri or something like that. But uh, it's basically green or greenish and covered with several layers of transparent lacquer. And there is Akatamenuri, which is uh, red, then covered with uh, some very sticky, very thin, thin layer of uh, very sticky raw lacquer. Uh, and I pasted some gold leaves on the red surface. Then there will be some experiments. Some of those experiments will be given away on my Instagram uh, feed profile. Uh, so feel invited soon. Okay. Once the Polish Post will start getting uh, taking parcels for abroad addresses, which is impossible right now due to this pandemics. Cool. So let's start with the Midori Tamenuri. It's already cleaned, already flattened, grinded, flattened, not exactly polished, but rather flattened. I need to dust it uh, a little bit because we do not want any dust particles or, or small fibers. Uh, on the pen during painting <laughs> and I used special cloth uh, which is infused with some kind of oil which is not sticking to the to the surface it just picks up any dirt that can be left and now the layers I start by putting some Erushi around the circumference uh, in several places to build a little bit of Erushi to spread them thinly on the whole surface. I don't know, I'm not sure if you can see that, that, but when sanding, when sanding the surface of this pan, there are some spots, some areas which are sanded slightly more. Uh, the transparent layers, layers there it's fifth of them, as far as, as, far as I remember, uh, will be thinner uh, in total than in other places. So you will be able to see through those transparent layers and see the background, which is green. And that's why it's, why it's called Tamenuri. Tamenuri means the pool so it's, or a lake. So it will be like a, like a water in the lake. When it's deep, you can't see the bottom. But the shallower it gets, so the thinner the layers are getting, uh, the better you can see the bottom of the lake. So we are artificially, artificially creating areas where the layers are thinner and areas where layers are thicker to reproduce this idea of the lake on the pan. It's a cup of a very huge pan. It's almost seven inches long, uh, or, or maybe it's seven, seven inches long. It's like 17 centimeters, something like that, 16 and a half. And it's huge, but very light uh, for such a huge pan. I think it's shy, a little bit uh, smaller than uh, one of the biggest pens I've seen, Namiki Emperor, more or less the same size. And I'm planning to make one in pure red in, uh, in Vermilion. So it will, be, it will look like this Namiki pen but only on the first sight because they are very different, especially the nip and the filling system. Okay, so first one is done. And now the barrel. Okay. 
testing and thin layer of Fukushi. Exactly the same technique. I usually before painting, I try to degrease, clean my hands extremely well and degrease them. What is funny right now, because of huge amounts of hand sanitizer we are using all the time, uh, my hands are drier. So it's, uh, it's much less risk of putting some oil from my fingers or from my hands back on the pan but still you have to be mindful of this in one of the processes I will show you in the future so uh, uvazuri the last one of the last steps is polishing the pan with special powder migako migaki migakiko powder which is extremely fine and in the last steps, the masters of Rushi use only tiny amount of oil and they say that it's just enough if you rub your finger on your forehead and that's exactly that amount of oil which is really needed to polish whole pan with Mikakiko. So just a tiny amount, just a little bit of grease. Natural grease, of course, in this case, especially. Okay. So, in this step, I will not paint the threads. I did it in several previous steps. I will check them, clean them uh, after this layer will cure, and then I will decide if I do anything with them. They were painted base one layer then they will they were cleaned and then painted with uh, green layer at least one or two maybe two as far as i remember then cleaned again of course and slightly and uh, painted with one of the transparent layers so they they reproduce the exact same sequence as on the rest of the pan but there is much less layers and much less urushi altogether on the threads, otherwise it would get clogged and unusable. And we want our threads in our pants. Cool. So the section and it's the last part of this pen. With the section you have to be very mindful of the curvature of the section, uh, not to put too much urushi in this under this lip here and it would make it uh, much thicker in this area and it could get it could not cure in the same pace as the rest of the layer and we could have some problems with it as I already did many times. <laughs> That's why I know. Most of the things I know about Urushi is through experiment. You can read a lot of documents and, and there is not much, of course, but you can read them all. But you will still be surprised with almost everything along the way. Okay, the next pen is Akatama Nuri, it's red. Can you see this? I don't know which camera will will show it better. And uh, it's red and then covered with some gold leaf. Uh, it was one of the first Ebonite pen I had. It's Ranga, Ranga Model 3. I used it for a long time and decided to modify it recently. So unlike most of other pens I do. It's a clip pen. It's a pen with a clip, not a clipless one. I like clipless ones because they are very easy to, to prepare for painting. I do not have to uh, 
remove any anything from the pen, just cover some threads or something like that and good to go. Uh, with this one it was quite easy too because you can just unscrew the part of the cap and and remove the clip. I also decided to modify the clip itself and to lacquer it with Urushi. Uh, metal is difficult because you have to make sure that the first layer of Urushi, the base layer, usually key Urushi, sticks to the metal really well. So in case of some metals uh, it's easy, like for brass it's very easy, but for example for steel uh, you have to bake it. So you cover very, with a very thin layer of ki urushi, so raw urushi, sashimi urushi, and then bake it in 150 degrees Celsius for one hour in the oven, just a kitchen oven, and it cures this way, slightly different than usual, so with the humidity, and the layer is bonded with metal much more. It's much stronger bond. I don't know why I, I couldn't find any information how it works, but it works. I tested it and it works very well. The layer is very hard and it's bonded with metal very well. And you can safely add more layers, not risking that it will chip off or anything like this. With brass, it's easier because brass tends to be uh, very friendly to Urushi. For example, a lot of Namiki pens are brass or they are not uh, ebonite. So Yukari Royale or something like that, they are brass pens. And some, some pilot pens, some platinum, I don't know, I don't remember. And it's quite a popular base for Urushi and Makia is brass pants, brass bodies. Okay. I try to cover the surface of the part of the pen uh, in different directions first, but then the, with a very light moves, I spread out this Urushi with make this layer as even as possible with this brush and my technique. Uh, okay, and the last section I will change the brush to a slightly smaller one because this section is it's my second or third pen with gold leaves. It's a uh, real gold, 24 carats gold leaf and uh, in previous ones I made a lot of mistakes. I tried to avoid them this time. One of the biggest mistakes was putting too thick layer below just 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 stick just to stick the gold leaves to the pan. This layer should be very thin, just rubbed on some orushi, that's it. And it's the same with the layer just after the gold leaf. So this layer directly below and directly above above gold should be as thin as possible. You just need to stick them and then just need to bond them. Okay. So now the experimental part. Maybe one last thing. It's a the clip I was talking about, I will use this pen because I will uh, I will not be using it anymore today. I will just stick with the smaller one. And this pen is covered with some uh, silver dust. So I think some of the dust might get into the brush and it will make some troubles later. So just a thin layer of Transparent Urushi, no. What I can do later, especially, actually only with this part, is to wipe off 
this Hiroshi uh, just to live only a tiny amount. Uh, I will decide in a minute. First I will finish other pens, other parts. Those other parts are the bodies, the barrels of Parker Frontier. I, it was first pen I used for Urushi and I made like it's four already and there are three next, three more here and I just train on them. I just try new techniques, do new ideas, uh, sometimes very crazy. I sometimes have to grind it back to the, to the plastic or metal, depending on which kind of uh, barrel I use, and start over. Uh, but some of them uh, are finished and they look very nice and they are the most unusual Parker Frontiers you can ever see. I decided not to sell them, I'm giving them away. And I'm giving them right now only on my Instagram channel, but once uh, I will hit 500 subscribers on YouTube, I will also start giving those pens away on YouTube. So, subscribe, please. And of course, like this video. Uh, what would be very interesting, uh, I would like to know what would you like you to see on my videos? Uh, I mean, what technique, what tools, what materials, what pens? Uh, actually, maybe me talking about something, I don't know, no idea. Just write in a comment uh, what would you like to see in my videos in the future. I will try to I will try to fulfill your wishes and prepare such content for you. Uh, this one is special because it's one of the first Maki A I tried, uh, but it's well Maki A-ish <laughs> rubber, so it's Momiji leaves. No, it's a clone, clone, yes, clone leaves on a dark, dark green surface. Um, but right now I'm just trying to, to add some transparent layers, uh, keeping the Momiji leaves visible somehow. I'm not sure how it's done. I read a lot of Makie and I watched some videos on YouTube, but it's a mystery for me, most of the steps, because those videos just show part of the steps, part of some of the steps and parts of the steps. They are shortened and they are just for fun. They are not instructional videos. So I am trying to reproduce it. I have never been to Japan. I want to go. I have never worked with anyone uh, doing Kurushi, so I'm trying to uh, discover this technique from, from, for my own, from scratch, actually. Uh, okay, and this one is covered with uh, aluminum and, and uh, copper. Uh, and I'm very curious how it will turn out. Okay, we are, I think I'm concluding this session with Hiroshi. Uh, I hope you liked it. And it wasn't, I hope it wasn't extremely boring, maybe for some. <laughs> but if you want to learn Hiroshi, I just, I just have to say one thing, you have to start. You have to start because I, I think I waited a little bit too long with my research and preparations and stuff like this. Uh, I could I could easily start it earlier. My main problem was how to get this freaking Roshi, how to, how to put my hands on it, how to, where to buy it, where to steal it, whatever. I just wanted Urushi. I didn't know what, how, how to buy it. I was 
to, to tell you the truth, I was afraid to order from Japan uh, because like sending some poisonous and allergenic uh, substance from Japan to Poland seemed quite absurd. So I found uh, first uh, supplier in Germany, it was Dictum, and then then it was Watanabe Shoten. So that's it. I hope you liked it and uh, subscribe and like this video and please <laughs> and see you soon in one of my future videos. Thank you.